Welcome to the Suerte del Molino Farm, Andalusia in Spain. 27 degrees Celsius. The soil is humid and things are growing. A lot of sunshine, warmth, humidity. It's a jungle. So I devised a very intricate system here. A metal bar with a piece of string. And I thought if I pull this over this growth, I can flatten it. But it's not really happening. A little bit. Maybe I have to do it several times. A little bit disappointing. Okay, back to the drawing board. Need something that's much heavier and perhaps something that's rolling. Anyway, this is the khaki taking off. I have cleared these swales and uh, mulched them with straw and this is a pomegranate we have a lot of uh, cabbage like things in there and uh, also some uh, garlic but we planted them too late we need to plant it early in autumn then we can expect some product so again I have to flatten this something heavier we will now clean these beds one by one and then start replanting them that will be fun looking forward to the new season what it will bring this is the snow peas a lot of them we have to harvest them I have been without half of the workforce for almost six weeks now so uh, things are slow artichoke a lot of them so this is a swale and a berm and uh, apricot tree two years old and this is how we actually do this we just fold it one way into the into the swale actually no need to remove much we don't want it away only away from the burn this is a footpath that goes through here This is the wild calendula. It's too wild. You just go into your swell. I'm a little bit careful what I pull out because 
we have some tiny trees in here like the hackberry and this is the moringa so this is more or less the process and then I repeat the same on the other side and then I just clear the middle strip and then we are ready to mulch it great the moringas are not a success they're just hanging there I don't want plants that hang in there. I want plants that thrive. So uh, we have had a few hundred of them. They're still there, but they grow and then they die back and then they grow from the root again and then they die back. I mean, it's not a problem, but uh, not what I want. We can do better. This is also the start of the hay fever season. A lot of pollen, especially from the grasses. And uh, this one I have done this morning. And then uh, Here we have another bamboo and it's a runner and people will say I should not do that but I will harvest it and use it and also 10 years from now I'm not here anymore and then the next generation can do that. I don't see it as a problem. Uh, especially not in this hot and dry climate. Uh, many, many things here don't spread the way they spread in uh, more temperate climates. So, grow bamboo, grow. Only a few leaves on this peach and already some uh, fungi fungi are not fun fun guys they are the opposite in this regard they must sit in the soil and do their magic out of lemons Mm, it smells so nice. I realize that the citrus we have, they need a lot of nitrogen. And uh, they don't get it, especially because there is a lot of microorganisms who take preference in the consumption of the nitrogen because we have added a lot of organic material and uh, to break down the organic material the microorganisms need nitrogen and they will take it first and then only in two three years when they die, it's available to the plants. So I'm thinking of getting some leaf spray, nitrogen leaf spray for the citrus. And this bamboo here next to the entrance, it's a four meter bamboo, more my style. 
So I look forward that it can grow. I need a lot of bamboo to build a lot of things, especially windbreaks to protect our humidity from evaporation and we have to give shade and also we have to protect against the wind. This is still some winter crop, some cabbage and carrots and cabbage and beetroot and broccoli so we have another citrus a lot of flowers meaning it is struggling meaning it tells itself let me reproduce before I die what I've also learned is that um, these plants, when they have a shortage of a nutrient, the only way they can absorb it or get it is to take as much water from the earth as possible because the nutrients are in the dissolved state. So it's not that they need the water, they need the nutrients, but to get the nutrients they take up much, much water, more water than they need, which is not good for our conditions, it's not good for the plant. So let's keep feeding the soil and not the plant. We need good soil. This is how our mango looks like after the winter and also the red guava and here we have the quince and then we have another bamboo that bamboo is the black bamboo I like it so much I've also doubled the size of the xyrophytes all these cactus-like plants, the gel-like plants and uh, they are now grouped together and I can actually take thousands of cuttings here and put it out on the swales when I have a moment I would be happy to do that.